All right, if you thought that the Galaxy S20 Ultra was a beast, wait for it. Because yes, we have even more leaks of the Galaxy S21, and this time it's all about how powerful it is. OnePlus just announced two new mid-rangers for their Nord line, and they seem pretty good. And some new patents and rumors tell us more about AirTags and the upcoming AirPods. I'm Jaime Rivera, and uh, I apologize if it sounds a bit echoey. It just turns out that we're moving studios, and Michael Fisher already moved the sound booth. So I have no way to cancel out the echo. This is Pocket Now Daily. The official news today begin with deals, and obviously if the story is the Galaxy S and its future, you can only expect the current devices to intensify when it comes to deals. Currently, the Galaxy S20 Ultra is $200 off, which leaves the entry-level variant in Cosmic Black for $1,200. Now, disclaimer, you can buy it, but you'll have to wait a couple of weeks for it to be back in stock. Now, the Galaxy Note 20 is $200 off, leaving it at a more reasonable $800 price tag for the unlock variant. And then finally, we've got the Sony Xperia 1 for $400 off, which leaves the entry-level variant for $549 from the original price. We've got more deals on the LG G8X than Q, the Apple Watch Series 6 that I'm currently using, iPads, and more in the description. Now let's talk about Huawei. I mean, we have seen the company try out foldables with the Mate X, the Mate XS, which I honestly find that to be my favorite form factor, even if it's proven to not be the most practical. But uh, it seems the company is willing to experiment with something else, or at least it hadn't before, but it can now. Well, according to a new patent from April, it looks like they are ready to compete with the Z Flip and the Razer. This new patent shows a clamshell foldable with a main display and a frame that looks pretty similar to the Z Flip with a sort of boxy design and bezels. Really, where the differences kick in is when you close it as it brings a significantly larger outer display right next to the dual camera module. Again, the hinge design looks a lot like the Z Flip, but I think this cover display makes much more sense than the viewfinder that we've got with the Z Flip, if you could even call it that thing. Let's see if Huawei manages to pull this off because it is actually cool to see. That being said, I think that there are more important things right now when it comes to smartphones than them being able to fold, particularly at a time when people aren't really willing to pay that much money for a product. Up next, we've got Apple, as we have to admit, it's been a while since we've seen the company launch a new pair of AirPods, and uh, we were expecting to see something in the last two events, and that didn't happen, and uh, well, we get details today. Now, we have a new report from Bloomberg that claims that we'll get the third generation AirPods and the second generation AirPods Pro on 2021. The report claims that Apple is working on two new models of the current AirPods lineup, meaning this isn't about the studios, actually. Apparently, the regular ones will be getting redesigned to look more like the Pros with a shorter stem with replaceable ear tips, but sadly there will be no noise cancellation or Pro features, if you could call them that. And moving on to the Pros, they're working on making them more compact, probably by removing the stem and giving them a more rounded shape, similar to what we're getting from Samsung. Cupertino is apparently putting a brand new chip in these and working to improve battery life. Now, finally, the report does mention that we will be getting these in the first half of 2021. Now, you already know me. I hate the first generation AirPods. I love the AirPods Pro. I can't wait to see what the company does next because that doesn't mean that AirPods Pro are perfect. And since we're talking Apple, another thing that we have been expecting to be announced and hasn't yet happened are AirTags. And uh, well, we were expecting that to also be announced at the iPhone event. It didn't happen. Uh, we got details as to why, but we did get more or less an idea idea of when to expect them. Well, now we have two patent applications filed by Apple for wirelessly locatable tag and the fastener with a retention ring. The patent reveals that this is a small, conveniently shaped device that can be attached to objects which feature a robust design that ensures reliable use in different conditions and environments. The design pretty much looks like if the Apple Watch charger was a tile tag with a metallic disc at the bottom, if that makes sense. The patent also shows different use it scenarios like for AR gaming to monitor your posture and more by putting it on a watch like casing 
why not just do that with the Apple Watch? But anyways, there's no true way to know if these are specifically for AirTags, but similarities are definitely there. Love to Dream also shared that we should be getting these in two sizes, one small and a bigger model. But finally, moving on, we have a new John Prosser tweet. He mentions that the final performance testing for AirTags will finish on November 6, and after this, product usually ships within 30 days. This makes it look like if we'll be getting it on Apple's November event, which will focus on ARM Max. I'm not exactly sure if these products will be related, but wouldn't it be cool if they were? We'll see. Now, how about if we talk OnePlus? I mean, there are a ton of things to love about the OnePlus 8T. I recently reviewed it, you saw the video. But there were also a couple of things that are just hard to be forgiven for the price. So the biggest problem is exactly that. That said, if you remember, the company went back to its roots with mid-range devices earlier this year with the Nord, and now they're expanding the lineup. The company just announced two new phones with the Nord N10 5G and the Nord N100, which will be available in North America and Europe. Let's start it off with the N100, which will be a lower end model. It brings a 6.52 inch display powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 460, as well as four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, and a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. It rocks a triple camera setup at the back, which consists of a 13 megapixel main sensor, a two megapixel bokeh lens, and a two megapixel macro. I know, seriously. The good thing is that this phone will go on for 179 pounds. Yeah, you heard that right. But now let's move on to the Nord N10 5G, which brings a 6.49 inch full HD plus display running at 90 Hertz. It's powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 690, which brings 5G along with six gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of expandable storage. I know, OnePlus with expandable storage and the 4300 milliamp hour battery. This one brings a quad camera array with 64 megapixels in the main lens, an eight megapixel ultra wide and two two megapixel sensors. Whatever. This one will cost you a crazy 329 pounds. And I say crazy because those are some pretty good specifications. Now we still don't have pricing or availability details of these devices in the United States, but uh, that should emerge soon. We'll keep you posted. But finally, the hottest news today have to do with Samsung and things to expect for 2021 because the rumors are that the company is planning to go all out very early in the year, whether that be the S21 or S30, whatever that device is going to be called. Now we have a full list of specifications for the S21 Ultra from 91 Mobiles. According to them, it'll bring a 6.8 inch AMOLED display at 2K resolution and either running at 120 or 144 Hertz. It'll be powered by the upcoming Qualcomm Snapdragon 875 or their own Exynos 2100 SoC, along with a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. No word on RAM or storage just yet, but then moving on to the cameras, we should be getting an updated version of the 108 megapixel lens, but it doesn't mention any other sensors at the back. However, it does say we'll be getting 40 megapixels in the selfie shooter, which is great. We love that on the S20 Ultra. Now, according to Ross Young, the color variants of the S21 will be gray, pink, violet, white, black, and silver, with some of these being exclusive to certain models. Now, multiple rumors do hint to this phone also bringing S Pen support, at least for the Ultra variant. Now remember, the plan is apparently for these phones to launch late January, early February. So in today's question, let us know, I mean, would these rumors make you wanna wait for that Galaxy S or not? Because in my case, I'll tell you this much, this year is full of really good phones that aren't necessarily that expensive. Uh, so uh, I don't know, I think that this year is quite compelling regardless of all the issues we've been dealing with, but leave us a comment down below. We'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you wanna get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram and follow me on my personal handles to see me complain about Fisher moving his stuff. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.